Hello everyone, my name is Joe Scorsone, channel is called Ethernet Wink. In today's video, we're going to be going over the architecture of the SIVB Collapse. And what I'm going to try and do is break it down into three big parts and put those parts into people language for you guys. So how this bank got in this terrible situation, how they made the terrible situation worse, and how people made it the worst situation. So, the way I'm going to break it down is the two things that made that happen and the one thing that made that happen. So, Let's get after it. Let's get after it. Let's get, let's get moving. So, first article we're going to look at is from Bloomberg because I want a job on the Monday, so I'm doing them first. Hi, Bloomberg. Hit me up. I graduate in 2026. This article was written by these people and we will be linked in the description. We're going to use this just so that, we be, well, that way we can learn a little bit about SIBB beforehand. So, Joe, who were they? Well, they were a lender that had quadrupled in size over the past five years and was valued at more than $40 billion as recently as last year. Wow. Sound like they got they got it going. Yeah, you're you're so right. The bank had about two hundred nine billion dollars in total assets and about one hundred seventy five point four billion in total deposits of data last year. Wow, they're doing great. Nope, they messed up big time on a big bomb trade. So let's get into it. What happened? What happened? How did this collapse happen? From the New York Times, written by these people. The collapse may have been an unforced self-inflicted error. The bank's management chose to sell twenty one billion dollars of bonds at a one point eight billion dollar loss. In part, it appears because many of those bonds were yielding an average of only 1.79% at a time when interest rates had risen drastically and the bank was starting to look like an underperformer relative to its peers. Why is 1.79% so, so significant? 1.79%. Well, when a bond's yield goes up, the bond's value goes down. So, here's a graph of 10-year bond yields. I don't know what kind of bonds they had specifically. I'm going to make a YouTube video about it. I'm going to guess that they had 10 year bonds. So, we see the bonds yield around this point, around that value. And then it did near quadruples. <laughs> okay, that's what happened. Now, what does that happen when bond yields, when a bonds yield, they have near quadruples? Well, this is the futures. This isn't the bonds. This is what, this is, if you buy bonds, you don't buy this. If you buy futures, you buy this. Well, we can use this for a trend. Well, Bond's value goes down when the yields do that, and they go down by quite a bit. Now, what's so crazy about this is that if we remember from Bloomberg, they had $209 billion in assets under management. So, 10% of their assets under management on a single idea. And if we look at the dollar loss amount, $1.8 billion loss on a $21 billion investment, that was about 9%. The fact that this happened with 10% of their assets under management and a 9% loss is ridiculous, in my opinion, from a risk management standpoint. Maybe I don't know nothing, or maybe I'm the only person that's really opened his eyes and looked at how ridiculous that is. A 9% loss caused a $40 billion business to go out? Okay. But now, what else do we know, Joe? Because you said that there were two parts that made that happen, this big drop right here. Yeah, what's the second part, Joe? I'll, I'm going to tell you. In order to try and make back all that money that they lost, they did what's called a stock offering. So I'm going to use simple numbers. Let's say you're a business and you're valued at $1,000 and you have 100 shares on the market. Each share is going to be worth about $10. That makes sense? Worth $1,000, 100 parts, $10 a part. Now, let's say that you're SIVB and you quadruple and you sell the same amount of shares on the market. That's not how that works. This is a gross oversimplification. Each share would be worth 40 bucks. Now, let's say you lose $1.8 billion in some bonds, and all you would need is four grand to get you out of it. Well, you would do what's called a stock offering. You would sell more shares to the market at the current market price. That's what you would do. Or if you did it, just you could offer them to a buyer, you can offer them to the market. I believe in this case scenario, they just offered them to the market. So 100 shares in our example, at the current market price in our example, which is 40. So, <laughs> let's assume we're going to do this two ways. Let's assume that the value of your business hasn't changed at all. But now there's just double the amount of shares in the market. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to mess up that math. Hold on a second. I'm not going to do it mentally. I know I can, and I know I have the right answer. But, <laughs> but there we go. $20 a share. Oh, just because of that offering. The value of your business didn't change at all. Now your shares are just way less. Now, let's say you lose $1.8 billion in some bonds, and the value of your business actually does change. Let's say it's cut in half, because that's actually 
a little bit of a better scenario than what happens. And you sell 100 shares at the current market price, just like right there. Well, now you can see that each share is only worth 10 bucks. So your business actually managed to double and your shares are worth the same price. You haven't rewarded your shareholder shit. And yeah, and even if, let's, let's do this at this, because we you know what SIDD stock did, 260 to 173 at the time. So yeah, that actually does check out a little bit. But yeah, in this particular example, you sell stock and you kill your share price and it's just, it's just, you can, you can, you can see how this happens. You can see why this is not a good thing. This is why whenever you make money on a biotech, you sell it. So that way you don't get trapped in a situation where they do an offering and you're still holding your shares. That's what it talks about. And you get water one second. Okay. So the stock offering and just the loss in general is what made this happen. This job. What about this? This one down here. That's so significant. <clears throat> Hold up. Excuse me. <clears throat> wow. That's I just looked at this and maybe like closed forever. Um okay, so another thing happened. Beforehand. <clears throat> Excuse me, quick reminder. They have or they had one hundred and seventy five point four billion in total deposits at the end of last year. Okay, well, from this guy, Tommaso. Documents. Silicon Valley SVB customers initiated $42 billion in withdrawals on Thursday and on Friday morning. The NASDAQ all trading in the bank shares. What does that mean? Well, that means that customers tried to withdraw <clears throat> about a quarter of all the bank's deposits in one day. That doesn't happen. Nobody counts for that. And we know that fractional reserve banking exists, so they clearly had it because it was all withdrawn. But that's probably all the money that they had at the time. Fractional Reserve Banking doesn't account for this. That that shouldn't happen. But yeah. And that's actually what's called a bank run. We have had two bank runs in the last century. This is the second. We didn't have bank runs in 2008. The banks didn't have the money for people to run. <laughs> so yeah, now you know the biggest parts of the architecture of this financial collapse. Um... I, I really do think that you could boil it down to all of that because then you get into the nitty gritty, crypto, yada yada, big loss on bonds, and a whole lot of that <clears throat> is what triggered a lot of this. A nine percent loss on the tree. There's got to be more. There's got to be more. If you're gonna, if I'm, if I'm gonna, if my company is gonna go out of business from a trade. I'm Bill Huanger. You know what I'm saying? I'm leveraging up total return swaps. Biotech company. That's what I'm doing. You know what I mean? But that's all for this video. I told you to be quick. Eight minutes. Look at that. The one time I'm happy to be quick. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something new about one part of this whole collapse. Of course, many things working. Working in the background, working where we don't see. <clears throat> we probably don't even know a lot about this. But yeah, Jim Cramer continues to be very wrong all the time, even because of SBNY, the stock that just has gotten destroyed from this, 75%. These are financial institutions looking like Kathy stocks at the start of 2020 or 2022. I can say that joke because I have a lot of them. Okay. So I hope you guys learned something new. I hope you guys come around for the next one and I hope you guys have a great night. My name is Ben Joseph Corson, channel called Ethernet Link, Bloomberg 2026. Don't forget. That's when I graduate, but yeah, I love you guys. Have a good night.